So my coworker is lying, saying that I bullied her. So what do I tell her boss? Well, this coworker needs a better backbone, and you will not believe what my boss has to say. So guys, um, I recently received feedback at work. I need to know how to respond. I think my boss is very wrong, but I'm unsure of the best way to make her see that. I started my job last year. My role is highly technical. In a niche industry, not a lot of people do what I do, so these positions are hard to hire for. One of my colleagues, Sally, accused me of bullying her recently and asked to stop having to train me as a result. The reality is that her training is not very good and it seems when I express that I'm quote, bullying her, her role is tangential to mine and she was filling in for a couple of months before they hired me. She does not know how to do everything in my role, although our titles are the same. A lot of my training has been her guiding me rather than providing step-by-step -step instructions, actual training, the examples of bullying that my boss gave me include telling Sally that, quote, her procedures are not good, and also a time when I, quote, dismissed her. The reality is that her procedures weren't that great and need to be strengthened. When I made the comment, my colleague responded with a, quote, you're welcome to make any updates to any procedures, and even said the procedures get better every time someone new comes aboard. She didn't seem upset. When I dismissed her, it was actually a misunderstanding. She was trying to tell me something that I was sure was inaccurate. From my years of experience, I did not think what she's saying could be possible. And so I told her, that cannot be right. I admitted my tone was not completely snark free because she went on to explain why she wasn't wrong. And I doubled down that she quote, must have been mistaken. She just walked away. I found out from another colleague a couple weeks later that Sally was right, and our company is just a rare exception to the rule, but is certainly rare enough to warrant my pushback. There was a couple other examples, but I hate to bore you with details. These hardly seem like bullying to me, rather than misunderstandings. I think Sally is being very sensitive and immature. She's much younger than most people on the team and is further along in her career than most people her age. I think it's a self-confidence issue on her part to know that I was trying to help her see ways to improve her procedures and explaining why she was wrong. I want to tell my boss that Sally would benefit from Backbone and will certainly need one to further her career. It seems my boss wants me to blindly accept everything Sally says and say it's true with no questions asked. How can I convince my boss I was not bullying my colleague, but actually trying to help her? What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. There's multiple updates for this story and things are about to get pretty heated with Sally. I hope that you guys will subscribe to the channel and just know there's daily videos on this new channel and I'm so glad you guys are here to join me. First update, March 16th, 2022, 38 days after the original post. I think many readers did not understand what I was trying to convey, so I hope added context will help. Sally did create the procedures in question. During the three months she filled in, she combined four audits into one and created a way to find errors before implementing instead of afterward. This had potential to save a lot of time and money. However, her execution was sloppy and she was still working out the kinks to the new process when I came aboard. This made it almost impossible for me to follow her logic and learn. Sally should have left the process as is and let the new hire create efficiencies after they've been on the job for a while. Sally overstepped while she was filling in for my role. Many readers also wondered about my achievement level while still needing detailed training. Before this role, I worked for many years in consulting. My new role is a pivot into administration. I essentially became one of my former clients. Since this is a new side of the table for me, I do need a little more help and my boss is supportive and understands this. I also want to address the backbone comment. 
so I agree. I needed to select different language. However, my perspective is Sally was insecure about her procedures. For the new process, she implemented and hated to be called to the mat when things weren't working or needed modification when identified. She was quick to explain away issues by referring to the procedures which included a bunch of ifs and thens type of analysis on how to think something through and identify the next step. Her new process would find errors and then her procedures explained how to look into them since everything has a different solution. I think her process could be strengthened to do more than simply highlight something that needs to be looked into. When I onboarded, Sally told me training is not just how to do something, but how to think about something. Sally's position is that as long as you think through something and make good faith decision, a mistake cannot be made, even if another choice would have proven to be better in the end. Management appears to support her, because one time she had to walk something back she did not get in trouble. In contrast, I prefer to know the best way to do things the first time around. It's better to do something once the right way in my viewpoint, as such, Sally's training style and materials are not providing the knowledge I need to do my job, and I've expressed that to our boss. The day before my letter was published, I was pulled into a meeting with my boss and Sally to clear the air. I was looking forward to moving past this. Instead of a civil discussion, Sally very quickly melted into tears. She accused me of bullying her, using the term exactly. She claimed I treat her very differently when we're alone, making snide comments and that I genuinely just behave very differently when our boss is present. Through tears, she told me this. She does not feel safe and does not want to engage with me anymore. She claimed that when I commented on her procedures, I specifically said, I thought your updated procedures would be better, and took that as a personal insult directed at her. The reality is that after walking me through her new process only two or three times, Sally would refer me back to her procedures when I asked questions. I finally found something not in her procedures and pointed it out to her when I made this infamous comment. She also listed other direct quotations she's written down over the past three months. She framed most of the things I've said as put-downs directed at her when they were factual observations. I was able to defend myself in the meeting well, and my boss said this has all just been a giant misunderstanding. Well, I was shaken by Sally's accusations, though. Sally had never discussed any of this with me, but was asking for our boss to intervene for almost two or three months that I've worked here. I've come to the conclusion that she's extremely, extremely sensitive. She's taken almost everything I've ever said as a personal slight against her, which all started when I, quote, dismissed her. If I have known it would cause such a fuss, I would have kept my concerns to myself and verified with my boss afterward. That's what I plan to do moving forward. I do not want to walk on eggshells with Sally. I want to work with professionals who can handle other people breaking down their ideas in order to strengthen them. My boss and I had a frank discussion after Sally's meltdown and I expressed my concerns. I detailed my concern that my boss was getting negative feedback and not sharing it. However, my boss understands that it'll take time for me to learn the role and has repeatedly said that I'm in an important member of the team. Thankfully, I think my boss see things as they are. I need to use kid gloves for Sally, and Sally needs some tougher skin. My boss is going to meet with Sally to decide the next few steps, but I'm hopeful our interaction can end soon. Second and final update, 90 days after the original update. Sending this in to close the loop on what happened. I expect to be... Ugh eviscerated in the comments, but I'm writing this in hopes that someone can learn from this situation. Sally resigned without another job lined up. She stated explicitly she resigned because she felt bullied by me and our boss would not make it stop. 
HR investigated and I received a written warning. They specifically stated I would be immediately terminated if a single other incident occurred. I've always been an overachiever with great working relationships. I've never received anything but great performance feedback. It's beyond distressing, and every day I'm terrified of losing my job. Sally didn't tell anyone on our broader team about feeling bullied. She only went to our managers. Her resignation was a shock to everyone, and people were very upset because she was popular. No internal candidates applied to Sally's job because people are suspicious. It's a very uncomfortable environment right now. I started therapy after Sally left. I've never done anything like that in my life, but it's been extremely helpful to me. My therapist helped me see everything that was happening in a different way, and now I understand. Yeah, I guess I did bully Sally. There were two things omitted from my earlier letters. The first is that my marriage imploded soon after I started this job. I didn't want a divorce, did not expect it, and two extreme life changes at once affected me more than I could realize. The career transition on top of my marriage ending, well, it was unimaginable. I'm still just trying to survive each day. The second item... Sally was the reason I was hired for this job. Sally and I worked together in consulting years prior. I actually knew her as a college intern who converted full-time after graduation. I watched her enter this industry. We stayed in touch after she left the employer, and Sally proactively recruited me for my role. She told me that it was the best job she's ever had and wanted to share a good thing because our former employer was toxic. In the meeting with HR, my grand boss told me point blank, they would not have hired me without Sally's recommendation. My natural sense of humor is snarky and sarcastic. Also, because Sally and I were friends, I felt like I did not need to censor myself around her so much. I didn't feel the need to be a strictly professional with a friend. This is why I treated her differently when we were alone. Granted, the put-downs, quote, I thought your updated procedures would be better, plus the other examples I gave you earlier, were not acceptable. I should never make those comments to anybody, and I also should never dismiss her outright. Also, the transition from consulting to administration was way harder than I could have ever imagined. The learning curve was a steep one, and I felt the walls closing in. I'm used to the cutthroat consulting culture where people are fired early and often if they fail to outperform. Sally told HR that she felt I was unable to make a mistake and therefore made even the smallest thing someone else's fault. As difficult as that was to hear, I eventually came to see how she felt that way. I blamed normal learning errors on her bad training instead of just fixing it and moving on. One example she provided was when I asked her to write an email, but her procedures said to respond to an email, and I told her that her procedures were inaccurate and asked her to update them and apologize. I genuinely don't know what I was thinking. Watching Sally, someone I knew when she was in a college intern, be a rock star at a job I was struggling with really affected me. I didn't know it at the time, but I bullied Sally because of her age and what I felt her success said about me. I dismissed her, put her down, told colleagues she was bad at training and making myself feel better. I wish I could take it all back and do it all over again. I wish I could apologize to her, but she's blocked me on every social platform and even returned an apology letter I mailed to her house. I'm ashamed to admit this. I'm ashamed to admit my behavior. I did not consciously bully her. I'm a good person, and I did not mean to do this. I knew I was not being overly nice to Sally, but was blinded by the pain of my marriage ending to see how my behavior was actually affecting her. This situation really snowballed away from me, and I'm committed to working on myself through therapy to ensure this never happens again. I hope that if someone sees themselves in my first two letters, they'll learn from my mistakes. Trust me, you do not want to feel the way I feel right now. 
It is possible to bully someone unconsciously. I'm actively job searching now, and this could have been a great job, but I feel it would be honorable to resign. Okay, so let's walk through a couple comments on this story because this one was pretty crazy. His own boss agreeing with him when absolutely everyone else, including finally OP, can see how much of a bully he was is genuinely upsetting me for some reason. Sally's there rocking her job and being awesome. Someone just comes along and targets her because of her gender and age, and management backs them so completely, the only thing she can do is quit so quickly, she doesn't have time to job hunt first. That's ducking terrible. I agree, guys. Here's comment two. My guess is that OP is misrepresenting things there, and Boss agreed with one small point, or OP made a weasel point that Boss had no choice but to agree with. Quote, wouldn't you agree that a person in our industry needs to be able to accept criticism? This is when the next commenter replies to that. This is how certain members of my family are. I agreed with one part of someone's argument and then suddenly I'm claiming sides because I agree with so-and-so. I sent it straight really quickly though. Just because I agree to parts of it, Part of what was saying does not mean I agree with you fully. And here's the final comment that shows a little bit of a similar situation. I recently left a position like this. My direct supervisor treated me terribly. No one else on the team had the same experience with her and it felt so crappy. I finally left when I caught her lying to her boss about my performance for the third time. I was trying to avoid going to her boss about my experience because it was a new program. COVID was also a thing and it was clear that my supervisor was struggling. It was never about me at all, just like OP's behavior, but it was an awful experience. Guys, I want to hear your opinions on this. If you were going through this drama that Sally had to put up with, how would you go about handling this? We know now that OP was nothing but a bully, even he knows it. So drop your thoughts down below guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Do not forget to smash that subscribe button if you do want to support me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.